Um, I'm playing the Forbidden deck. I'm trying to see how it loses. Or shoot, exactly. Right? There's lots of ways this deck just doesn't win. Hello, friends. It's Lionheart here. Slightly different background. Same Lionheart. And this is our first deck guide of the season. But with a twist... Yes, it is the Drakenborg deck you're possibly growing to hate, but as the title implies, it's more of a guide on how to beat it, rather than how to play it. I will show you a game of me playing it, and how it works, and the basic game plan. It's pretty simplistic in terms of its game plan for the all-in super greedy version that you're likely facing, but I think it's more important to show you how to beat it. Now, Drakenborg, if you don't know, it is a new card that has gone into Gwent. And the card itself is interesting. We're going to flip over and we will take a look at it so that you can see exactly how the card looks. Before we get there, of course, I'm going to be releasing lots of videos throughout the course of this season with all of the new cards. This is going to be an NR guide, but I have multiple ones for Skelliger, for Monsters and Squirtel coming as well. I'm still finessing how I'd like my syndicate list to look. If you've got any suggestions on new syndicate lists, I'd love to see them. I've got one with Boris in that's kind of mid-range and feels really fun, but it isn't quite there. So I'd love to see what you've got. Let me know in the comments down below if you've managed to make that work. And yes, I will do my very best to get a clog list out into the world as well. One final shout out. Myself and my better half, Ghost Arya, are hosting a Gwent tournament again. Community-based tournament. It's going to be taking place from the beginning of May, running for the first week of May, and then we will cast the finals live on May the 6th. If you're interested in taking part, please do join our Discord. Editing me is going to put the Discord link here. Smart. Join it, head into tournaments, and get some information. Hope to see you there. Now, let's go take a look at Drakenborg. So, Drakenborg, one of the new cards. It is a location. It is resilient, an issue we'll get to. And its deployability is summon a unit from your deck to this row. Lock it and remove its boost. Now, you'll have heard me go through this card if you watch my card reveal. The order ability boosts the allied unit by zero, and it's by the amount that you removed. So the whole synergy for this deck is around getting a, Sig a Dijkstra, who has just disappeared, get Siggy, and boost him in your deck as high as possible. You're going to use things like Melithalee's Temple to boost. You're going to grab this from the deck. It doesn't get a double boost, but it starts that way. You're then going to be using cards like Dandelion in some lists to boost him as high as you can. Other lists might be running things like Muse Generator. The all-in version doesn't, interestingly, but you could use a card like Muse Generator and you will often see the Redanian Agents being played as well for as much hand buff as possible, or rather deck buff as possible, onto that Siggy. Now, the thing with, De with Dijkstra, an all-in version of this deck can very easily buff Dijkstra to around 40 points, some even higher. And that strategy is very, very slow. Other cards that it will use, of course, are things like All God. And you will always see All God and offerings in this list. The counterplay to beating this, don't give them good offering value on your engines, is very, very important. We'll get to that in a little while. But it's all about that buff. It's for them, all about hand buffing early. That's what they tried to do and they're going to use that for their round one strategy. That's what you're going to do as a player playing this. It means, much like the previous Erland Muta Generator lists of seasons past, you're probably losing round one and probably on even. A lot of times when you face this, you can even win on even if you are blue coin by tempoing them out of the round. You don't need to commit massive pieces to do that because the plays are so slow. The, the player playing the list should not be committing Drakenborg round one. This card exists in two rounds, and those two rounds should be round two and three for that player, ideally. If they give it you in round one, they are really, really going to struggle because you can commit a lot in round two, and they don't have a round three game plan, typically. Now, the card itself, not too much of an issue. 
The issue for most people is interaction, of course. Ah, it's Gwyn Viandra again. Because she refreshes that order. As I mentioned, it's very easy to get Sigismund Dijkstra to 40 points, and I would say you're consistently going to see him anywhere between 25 points of buff and 40 points of buff is about realistic. And Dwim Viandra got a big nerf that I think most people may have missed in the expansion drop. Dwim Viandra used to just reset an order instantly, meaning it can be used again. Now it refreshes the order, and as a result, you have to wait a whole extra turn. Much slower doesn't stop Dwim Viandra being a bit painful in this interaction, because of course, she keeps re-enabling that Drakenborg. Now, I told you I'd help you beat it. Well, the first and most simple way to beat it, of course, is to deal with Drakenborg. If you heatwave this, a lot of those decks are just going to go away. They're just going to leave because that's their only solitary game plan. But there's a lot more to it than that. You don't, uh, you don't want to run heatwave. Maybe you're not running a shoot deck for artifact removal and you haven't decided to put verification in your deck. You don't want those things. It's still very beatable. Now, to clarify, this is not me saying I like the current interaction. And I, my suggestion is one of two things, because I don't particularly think it's the greatest interaction. I like Drakenborg as a card. I think giving immunity does not help, because if I can only use this once, why would I play it? It's just taking a buff from another card that I already have buffed and locking that card. There's no reason for me to play this realistically. The synergy is not worth it. So giving it immunity, isn't it? Taking away resilience would mean it could be bled out and only used in one round. That would heavily limit the toxicity of this card. But that is fixing one issue when the bigger issue is potentially Dwimbiandra. I have a suggestion, and it's one that Gwent has given us itself. Dwimbiandra should or could function a bit like cargo. When Drimviandra targets something, she should apply a status, or a rather a tag, to that. In the same way that Cargo applies prepared, Drimviandra could apply pillaged, for example, ruined, whatever, and means it is a simple status that I have created that would mean cannot be targeted by another Drimviandra. You cannot purify a location, meaning it would limit the interaction. I am fine with Dwim Viandra working with Drakenborg. I think to play Drakenborg, you have to do that at least once. My issue is that you can do it seven times easily. The two Dwim Viandras in your deck can work. You can then play things like Practice Makes Perfect, Teleportation, Reinforcements, Necromancy. You can, eight. You can, there are so many ways you can do it that it becomes, or it begins to feel binary. So that's how I would fix in my opinion. That's how what I would change. But let me get back to the other ways to win. Now, a little further on, you're going to see me face this deck and decimate it. Because it has a very, very one-dimensional strategy, thankfully it has a pretty decent one-dimensional answer. Not every deck can beat it, not every deck can do this, and it's important to understand that. But in the current meta, there are a lot of engine-based decks, or in multiple metas, there are lots of engine-based decks, Right now, for example, Golden Necker Swarm, pretty engine based. If you're going for even Arrakis Swarm in general, you know they don't have a lot of control. It's not an issue. You can deal with it. Your idea is beat them round one, which is very easy. As I mentioned, they don't have a lot of tempo unless they grossly overcommit. And as a result, you can usually beat them, if not on even. Almost always, as an engine deck, you are favored in a long round against this deck. If you are running Guerrilla Tactics Elves, and you can you can greed your options, they don't have a massive amount of removal here. That's very worth remembering. As a result, you can consider taking tempo passes if you know it's going to put the multiple cards down because you're in a safer spot. You can take them to that long round three having won the first round, and it's perfect for you. Rain will beat it by several hundred points in a long round. Harmony from last season, any variant of it, will beat it comfortably in a long round. I would argue it takes something like Townsfolk Line Pockets. It will beat it. Were Elves going down the 
double venosial kind of gatling gun approach set up your cargoes get all of your waylays with simless that will beat this in a long round yes it and okay even and i don't really want to encourage you to play things like reavers but reavers will probably beat this if not definitely will beat this in a long round knights will beat this in a long round you're starting to see even i will go and say I you take my Chromageddon list, my lovely Chromageddon list from a few seasons ago. This will beat it in a long round. And I would say it won't be close. Now, when I say this, obvious caveats, right? If they've somehow managed to get a 65 point boosted and they can play it seven times, you're going to struggle. But that means you probably didn't follow the strategy or they got the luckiest of all lucky things where Siggy was on the top and they played Dandelion and both of them and triggered all of them in the perfect situation. You're not going to win every single game against anything. The fact that some decks are good against some things and bad against others is actually the sign of a healthy meta. Doesn't mean the interaction is healthy for the game overall. So that's kind of my take on it. I'm about to show you two game plans now. One of me playing it, and it's by no means the ideal perfect strategy. It's not, it, it's not the exact way everybody should be doing it. In fact, you know, let me go over here. By no means am I saying this is the perfect strategy to play it, or that it can't beat you in a long round. It can, if you don't have that removal. But with engine-based gameplay, knowing the card and the list pretty much only has 4p removal with those offerings, in a rain deck for instance, the only real lose condition there is you let them deal with your messengers. Do not just dump a messenger on the board with no rain the other side, because then you will lose it. That is how you lose but you can very easily, in any of those decks, set up multiple of your engines, go for that greedy play, and you will beat it. You will. Let me know how you get on with this. How are you finding the list to play with or against? Have my tips helped you? If they have, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. I really appreciate it and it makes a big difference. I'm sorry that I'm under the weather, I'm pale, I'm congested, I feel really ill today, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. I hope I will be better for the next set of videos in the next few days and keep your eyes on my YouTube because we will be doing our first ever YouTube live stream next week. Thank you for being here, friends. As always, it has been a pleasure. Love you. See, you next see time. where we were. So we're against vampires, which means we're probably against Renfri, which means they can't heat wave us. That's already bad for them. Already very bad for them. Now it's going to come down to how many of our neutrals do we find early enough. Uh, squirrel... I don't particularly think we need the squirrel. This is pretty great as an opening hand, chat. The vitality does pull the agent, but you're never you're never getting it in that way. But yes, that is a problem, Aguas, to be fair, yes. That is a problem. Ideally, you don't want that to happen for sure. Oh, Dijkstra, what are you doing to me, lad? Okay, DJ Extra jumping into hand. Thankfully, we can shuffle him away. <clears throat> Old DJ Extra not helping me out at all here. Welcome back, Geralt of Rivia. Okay, so we're not Renfrey. Okay, we're just Greedy Fledders. Interesting. Can we beat Greedy Fledder? suited to my lady hmm. I in an ideal world you'd want two of these in this list as well but it just doesn't fit provisionally I think I have to purify this annoyingly <laughs> hello darling they're so expensive they're so worth it though they are so worth it. None of these are, however. You are amazing in this. Mad Kian is so good here. Mad Kian is phenomenal, chat. We love a bit of Mad Kian. Um, I don't need the Drakenborg yet. Don't want the Drakenborg yet. I do, however, want Raddy Daddy. 
And I don't want DJ extra. At six provisions, these are so worth it. I will I'm definitely want to be running two. And I think in the less greedy version, I am running two. Um, so. That's fine for us. One of the things people do wrong in this ver in this list is they believe that this is all about winning round one. It's not about winning round one at all. We're not in any way worried about round one. Not particularly. It's not much of an issue for us, to be completely honest. We're playing for setup in a lot of matches because they just can't compete. We're just not giving Drakenborg unless we're winning round one to two zero. Hey, new carpet. It's the horrible Drakenborg deck is what we are currently out here with. They have got a Nero in the graveyard as well, so it's entirely worth just making that worse for them, right? They'll play a few more turns yet. They're pretty keen to do that. I'm inclined to think Lady of the Lake existing means that Erendite does too. Uh, I, I think that correlation is fair. And if you guys agree, I feel like it's probably correct. Also, if you are uh, competing in the Moshcraft tournament, good luck. Let us know how you get on. I would have played if I'd had a bit more time or I'd known it was going on. Um, yeah, because it could have been fun. And I'll definitely keep an eye out. Arya and I have a tournament coming up in a few weeks. You guys know me. I love a Gwent tournament. So we need to do the maths here quickly. Minus three, four, five, six. So effectively, we're only on seven points here. Is it worth pushing another? I think so. In three cards, I can still catch between this, this, and honestly, this is fine. So... Only my pouch would have known no end of orange. Let's deny them the value there. And I don't think they want to pass. I'd be surprised if they want to pass. Very surprised. So far, the downside is we've only got one fledder. And it's not a real fledder, it's from Operator. So we know there's a fledder in their hand. One we would very much like to see. They're going to have access to bring some of them back. We know that. That's how this works. Um. Do, 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 do. Okay. Resi 4 had you hooked today. Nice. Resi 4 is amazing from what I'm hearing. Now I'm willing to take a pass. Completely fine taking a pass here. We lose this round. If they take us to a long round, we are just winning. If they bleed us, they will feel like they're in control until they're not. And then it will be pretty scary for them. We have not got much set up on DJ. He's currently only boosted by 14. And next round, our job is to resolve that. And that's what we want to do here. This can't be Golden Necker. Obviously, Lady of the Lake um, could be. But the Aneromancy we've got rid of fixes that. They've passed now. That's fine. I think I'm pretty happy now. We committed very little, but got some setup, got some carryover. You can be free mulligan. Amazing. Perfect. Okay. Free mulligan. Free mulligan. I <laughs> love to see it. I uh, love to see it. Okay. I think this... Because this is also, by the way... Exactly as valuable as Siggy. It doubles the value. I boost and I damage by it, right? It doesn't... If I get a death blow, I reset power, but I just don't aim for a death blow. It's still pretty great when you think about it, right? More situational. I'll give you that, but... Still pretty good. Only if you don't kill, yes. Only if you don't kill. So obviously you're not stacking quite to the same level. But... Still plenty of times when it's worth it, right? So...
One final joiner. I would if I could. Yeah, sometimes you can't not get the death blow. That's true. I'm not set up or prepared, I'm afraid. You bastard. To be. You clever, clever bastard. Otherwise I would. Yes, Skelly is already good. Oh Yo! <laughs> Magpie! How the devil are you? You legend you. How are you finding this new patch? Welcome in. Amazing to see you. Yes, you can call me anything you like because I'm running Drakenborg right now. But to see how it's beaten, not to abuse it. Honest. Promise. How are you? Great to see you. Obviously, I understand if you've got to run. Thank you so much for the raid and welcome in everyone. My name is Lionheart. We're currently seeing how many people have worked out that heat waving Drakenborg just makes the whole list fall apart. Effectively is our current plan. How are you all doing? For educational purposes. Don't give me the copium. It is. <laughs> Good to have you here. Good to have new patch, old decks, Mino like angle. Yes, you, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You tell him, Magpie. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. Uh, clicky. Uh, that doesn't actually get me ahead, but we win the long round, so we don't care. Um, welcome in, welcome in. I can imagine a few of these playing into your game style. I'm excited to see. I'm sad that Swarm or Akka Swarm isn't very good still, but I think Control AQ could do okay. I'm kind of hoping you figure that out so that I can, you know, copy it. <laughs> uh, Letterlick, thank you for the follow. Yo, Dayton, what's up? Why don't we have an angry emote? We do. We quite literally have Lionheart angry. And we quite literally have an angry emote. Uh, hey, Letterlick, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for the follow. Really appreciate it. So, I'm... It is how I punish those who irritate me. I want to protect that, but I also... Yeah, this is fine. Uh, so we're ahead now. Oh, she's... Mm. It's all good, it's all good. And everyone that's come over from Magpie's channel, what have you been doing? Dragon Ball not being immune like Temple feels weird. Zubin, so oh, it was something that we brought up actually, right? Um, by, by we brought up, I mean was discussed in the PTR before it was released. And they don't want to just throw immunity on everything that feels... Mm, I'm Drakenborg still feels nuts to me. I feel like giving every problematic Northern Realms location immunity doesn't really feel sensible. But there are things we definitely need to do to help it. There's what I was thinking. So they do have one, right? So I, I can understand your thoughts on it because I, I get it. I would like to see the problem dealt with, not the, like, the root cause. This lady. Now that we have prepared as an option with cargo, right? Meaning can't be targeted by the same thing again. Why can't Twin Viandra give things prepared so that she can't be spammed on the same target? That would be an interesting option. If it's necessary, that could be really interesting. Yo, Gnome, what's up? Um, good to see you. Uh, shouldn't be a location, but then what do you make it? I think the one thing I would love to see for Drakenborg, um, to be completely honest, I would absolutely love to see Drakenborg not... Um... I need to be quicker, chat. One second. Um, I, I don't think it should have um, resilience. If Dragon Ball doesn't have resilience, the card's not very good. It's You can bleed it effectively then. You can't when it's got the resilience. And that's what I struggle with. Looks like Detlaf's row effect. Don't apologize. And yes, it does. When that... Oh, I'm going to call you Tfo. Tfo, when this first came out, everybody had that same problem because vampires were even meta at the time. Redwick, what's up, chief? Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in what you guys think would be solutions. Uh, uh, how would you... Firstly, do you think it, it's 
a desperate requirement that it has a solution because it's so terrible that it's... Or is that a bit of an overreaction on some of our parts? You're in China? No way! How is that? How are things over there, my friend? Uh, just make it devotion. Does that really help? If it's devo- Okay, let me change that. If this is a devotion card, are you ever playing it? Devotion Drakenborg right now that can take a boost I've already earned to just give it to something else? You're never playing this card if it's devotion. Unless there's a benefit for it being devotion rather than a pullback, right? Uh, it got tested a lot. It got tested a lot, I can promise you. Um, I, in, I, trust me, it got tested plenty. <laughs> Um, there's no reason to play Devotion NR now. There's no, yeah, exactly. So, Arch Griffin, don't recommend. Uh, it, it's not good with Arch Griffin. That's it's still a meme. Um, so don't do that. It was, this was probably the longest PTR I remember for any card drop in the last 18 months. And I can't even begin to tell you how much changed. Um, ooh. Let's get How did this get? I think because this is the exact same question people asked about Dagon before realizing Dagon isn't actually very good. Right? And I honestly don't think this ends up causing the meta problem in the same way that that didn't. If I'm being completely honest with you. That's my opinion on it. I actually don't think it's as good as people believe it is. Realistically. I think it's quite a quite a way away from it. Dagon is slower. But so, did you not notice the massive Dwimbiandra nerf? Dwimbiandra used to re-enable orders. Dwimbiandras now take it back. They are now infinitely slower, right? You could you could give Tierra Lee a location because Wild Hunt was already devotion. True! That's very true, Zoob, and that's a fair shout, yeah. It's not zeal anymore. So that change already has made a massive impact on how this would have looked. Make Drakenborg give boost charges equal to removed and roping will limit how much. <laughs> Sanayo, that's an interesting one. Based on your internet connection, is it ceiling? Uh, just an artifact with resilience and no location tag, so Dwim can't target it and still be. So, if it's not a location and you can't Dwim be under it, mm, I think you should be able to target it with Dwim Beandra. I just don't think you should be able to target it with seven Dwim Beandras. What to do with Renfrey decks versus my NR deck? What, how would I, as a, how would Renfrey beat this? If you're a Renfrey deck against this, you have to basically probably win round one and two zero, I would say, as a Renfrey deck and be willing to. Because the NR player in this instance, me, is looking for you to be greedy. Right? Give Dwim a bonded clause. Now, Dwim having a bonded clause is a really interesting idea. I think it should be the case that Dwim Beandra can't target the same thing twice, and she should give a, the same thing that Cargo gives. It doesn't have to be call prepared, but for argument's sake, why the hell not? And make it Drakenborg. Add a tag, location, comma, plundered. Cannot be targeted by another Dwim Beandra. It effectively means that, yes, I could use her to target this, or to target this, but I couldn't just keep spamming Dwimbiandras on the same target over and over. I think that would be good. And I think that would be a good and sensible fix. If it turns out it's bad enough that it needs one. Right? Why are they running Igni in this... Oh, oh opponent, no. Oh boy. Okay. Really greedy engine heavy list to win. Yeah, I was going to say Renf. I heard someone complaining about Renfrey the other day, but the card is on its 25th nerf and just isn't good anymore. And I would argue it's not good in any deck at this point. There is probably a single beast deck, actually. The new, like a Renfrey Skellige Rain beast deck, which is okay. Don't like that. But. Yeah. I feel like the card has been nerfed into oblivion at this point. Still fun, still good, but and versatile as hell, but I honestly don't think it's 
yeah. I'm honestly not convinced it's that great these days. Uh, I'm not saying I want it buffed, to clarify. I'm not asking for it to be buffed. I'm just saying it's not good. Like, it's just not. If you're playing rank 30 to rank 5, it probably is still frustrating at some in some instances, but I'm, I'm honestly firmly of the belief that the card now is, like, tier 3 decks, e effectively. And maybe early on, that's, that all-beast Renfrey Skelliger deck could be decent enough to be 2. Maybe. Because you can get Kelpie with 6 turns of rain. Lebioda, not Leviosa! Share the night, share the love. Am I going to be annoyed with myself? Oh, if you greed that bleed, I'm going to be so irritated. Um, is it what? Is the Shani worth it? The Shani can't bring the Witcher back because it's only a human. It can bring the Redanian agent, but is it? It's so slow. But it's still nine points. Realistically. A Nero should be for Kian. Ah, oh, I need to buff Mad Kian once more. Any. Seven limbs, blood, and guts. We hang people for all so much less. Need to start tacking in Heatwave? I mean, yeah. Pretty much, bud. Tack in Heatwave, you're good. Anero reinforcements? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anero, I've got Dwim. Dwim, final card, which might end up being the Traveling Priestess, honestly. Uh, so... Uh, to create or send it to a opponent's deck. Abduction's a really interesting card. Abduction's a fascinating card. Okay. Am I playing Mad Kian? At the end, I think I am. So, it's now this for Dwimbiandra. Magic is Dragon Ball. Like, we're winning this. Like, their Regis is 21, maybe 24 points worth of value on their Regis, right? Maybe. Hmm. The new nil. So I've I hate clog. This this is not going to come as a surprise to any one of you that I absolutely hate clog. I've said it a lot. I've always hated it. But new clog. Even I don't hate new clog. I'm going to be completely honest. Even I don't hate new clog. You know, and I think modern clog is so much healthier than clog has been in the past. My home is wherever the road takes me. Uh, they've already played Igni, so I know they don't have it. Um, and I think this is how Clog should have looked. Yes, some of the original cards still work in that unhealthy manner, but the new ones fit more intrinsically, and it's not, you know... Yeah, no, okay. Yeah. Hey, cats, what's up? Yes, that was very funny, but there was context to why. Um, oh, it's 22-point Regis, okay. I can help Didn't even buff. There is no good nor evil. Only pain. Yeah, th yeah. So this wasn't close. Um, and I feel bad about it. Hey guys, so that was the first game. That was the first game where I was the Drakenborg player. Now I'm gonna send you into the second game where I face the Drakenborg player as a rain player, as an engine deck. Now by no means does my opponent play this perfectly, and neither do I. It's important to show that, because this is the reality of most of the games you're going to face. But in this matchup, if both of you do play perfectly, I believe the engine player can win. I don't have Heatwave. I'm not able to remove Drakenborg. Yes, as I mentioned at the beginning, that is the ideal way to deal with it. Of course it is. Run a shoot list and play artifact removal that way. 
remove it with a heat wave, verification even in some lists. But it's not your only win condition. Let's show you how to do it, shall we? In. Uh, oh, goodies. Oh, no, God. Light pockets deck. I've got a few already. Um, I've got. I've still got nine of my decks I've got to work through before I start grabbing others. But I do have two line pockets crimes decks so far. Um, okay, so we're another list that has no heat wave. So we have to win round one. Uh, no, this is this is Drakenborg. A hundred percent. This will be Drakenborg. So I have to win round one, pass round two, take a long round three. Insectoids, Death Wish, that's a fun concept if you've got enough Death Wish or enough ways of killing or consuming the Ruin. It'd be amazing. Haven't played since last year? Well then, get home. The new cards and the synergies, especially Rain and Raka Swarm. Played one, you need to test it. Let me know how you get on. Let me know how you get on. This might be our final game with Rain, and then we'll switch and try... Haven't really played much elves yet, so we'll switch and try elves. Misc, million, waylay, nonsense elves, right? Uh, fair warning, I've already cut Telian in. Again, I don't think the card's worth it. Haven't tried a Boris list yet. Haven't tried a Boris list yet. I need to put Boris into my crimes list because everything I've seen, like in theory, Boris should just be nuts, and it seems that it's delivering. Yeah, I know Shin was playing one. I think it was the one that Pope made and asked Shin to play. Shin probably made a few tweaks to it after that. Um, yeah, Ghost, for feel free. Feel free. Show me. You can always, guys, you can all link uh, lists and I will take a look at them. Uh, the heist is good on paper, but it gets no value most rounds. That's the thing, right? I actually think heist ends up being better in dwarves. But, yeah. Goes too tall? I think that's fine. But yes, it does go very tall. Okay, so they have to do this turn two. Let's develop our engines because they have no answers. This. Okay. They may have offerings. Yeah, they might. But they will have offerings. That's why we make sure it boosts to six. We never leave one of those on the board at four many 7p elves. Hmm, interesting. But yeah, we'll try some elves after this, see how they do, see how they perform. And then Araka Swarm, because I love Araka Swarm. Okay, there's Chad God, the big lad. We'll have a look at that deck in a second. Uh, okay, so you've gone old school. How, what's your Kelpie at? One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven. So you're only getting... You need one more beast to get an extra turn from Kelpie, if I'm counting right. Or am I counting wrong? You're only getting two turns of rain from your Kelpie. Yeah, I also need to consider Heat Wave in mine. You're getting three? Am I miscounting them? Two, three, four... Five, six, seven. Oh yeah, I didn't see the second anglerfish. Are you sure? Like, I, I don't buy into anglerfish at all. I really don't like anglerfish. I'm not convinced with it. It's good for thinning, yeah, but it's anti-synergy with real guns, so I really don't like it. That's bad for us. Do I have to lock the dandelion? Because otherwise, if I leave dandelion on this board, they're... They can have 40, 50 point Drakenborg pings. I think Anglerfish might be one of the worst cards in the drop, personally. But... But I'm happy to be wrong if I'm wrong. Hmm. 
In round one, it's fine. Yeah. It can be fine in round one. It would be best if we went out primitive air. The sea demands a Thank you. Uh, thin is expensive. It's one of the cheap options. It is. But I think if I'm looking for that, would, I'd much rather just run the crows then. Because they're just as effective thinning. I guess I have to play one of them. I don't know. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced with them at all. But I'll happily be wrong. I'll happily be wrong. I've, I've beaten multiple people who haven't realized that they run out of rain. Or don't have enough rain to maintain them in round one. Yeah, you never play. Yeah, the difference is you never play Angra from hand. That is good. That bit I agree. They've given up and lost on even early, knowing they can't effectively boost or keep up with us. I now take the long round three. Right? Yeah. I, yeah, we run lots of alchemy in this deck, so. Yeah, Kerbton going 25 and 0 with the list doesn't give me any re any bearing on how good it is. Um, but I appreciate what you're trying to say. Okay. I probably play to seven. Right? We're likely playing to seven, which means dropping this and Siri. You can kiss right? Tail goodbye. Then we've been to six, we thin to three, we thin to two. Perfect. Istrid! Break something and I'll break something too. I'll break you. I'll break you. I think long round last say we beat this all being well. I think they have slightly more than that Sauron. I, I don't think we get the card, but playing the Siri should tell them they have to get it. Oh boy! Oh boy. I mean, I'm still passing, right? Obviously, this was one of the created cards. Um, we won on even, and we're losing that advantage by passing. That's my only frustration. But do I feasibly ever keep it? We're losing the so I won on even, and by allowing by passing out at seven, I'm giving away an advantage. Their lack of leader is good, but they also still haven't played um, Raddy Daddy yet. So, and I have no way of stopping Radovid when he's dropped. So they have two more in reality. But obviously, they have to find Radovid, but yeah. Okay. So, this actually looks decent because Ermion has multiple targets, which means Golden Necker doesn't brick it. The 50-50 on Flaminica sucks. So I guess... Ooh. So, Messenger of the Sea. I've got three Messengers of the Sea. I set them up nice and early and we go in. Yeah, that's the plan. Last say is more about having as much rain value as possible, honestly. I don't believe this has removal that it didn't create, and I don't believe it created removal. That's the world I'm going to live in. And I need you all to come with me on that journey, okay? I need all of you to join me in my copium. Just 
Because they, they don't have a big enough Drakenborg yet that we're scared of it. Which means they're already slowing down their own Drakenborg. Yeah, chat, where's the belief? Lionheart RNG if you have it. Exclamation mark belief if you don't. Exclamation mark talent to see if we're going to win. You know? My talent knows no bounds! Yeah, full house. Yes, exactly. But I think that's good. I think that... I think you have to be able to work out which one makes the most sense for you as a result, right? Chat, I'm really hungry. Spawned full mart. Love that. Okay. Golden necker time now. It's early. I don't care. Okay. Ah, okay. One of the two is good. One of the two is bad. This is terrible. Uh, we're in, they should never have played that front row, and I'm not sure why they did. Uh, went to older symbol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, you could add the new cards into Enslave Six, and it could actually be good. Uh, um, what? Ah, oh, no, they had the offering. Boo, boo, hith boo. Ugh, gods protect us. They played the long game, chat. I played the long game. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, there was nothing we could really do about that. Oh, oh wow, this person is not as greedy. Interesting. Opponents just kind, maybe. Small. I'm curious, because I see people with usernames of all, let's say, shapes and sizes. What led you <laughs> to deciding that was the handle you would like to use on the internet, my friend? I, I just... And the, you know what? Let's ask all of you this question. Because you all know the, the history of mine. I'm the biggest Final Fantasy VIII fan you're ever going to find. Played the game when it released. Saved my life slash changed my life. Used to speedrun it, was with it was in touching distance of the old world record a while back, but I'm nowhere near it these days. Um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can still play the others, so we're in a, we're in a decent spot, honestly. I was just hoping for four. Uh, oh, we actually, you know, we still play four, right? Um, is your last name not much to do with it? Nice. Uh, yeah, Kyle, I know yours. But yeah, I'm curious. I'm ge I'm always curious. Like, some people obviously are using a temporary one, or they lost a bet, and they had to change it, didn't realize it was stuck like that for 90 days, stuff like that, right? Um, I'm always interested about the reasons. I think I Kelpie first, then I play the next one, just be- ah. Because I don't want to give them another decent offering target, right? Honestly, I think that's fine. Domi's your nickname IRL? Perfect. Makes good sense. I answer to Lionheart these days. If someone shouts Lionheart, I will answer. When I was recovering from surgery and streaming so much... Okay, that's a, that's a decent size. And then that comes out, purifies it as well. Okay. So now... Favourite character from a fantasy novel that you misspelled by accident and stuck? Nice! Is it Lorna Bass? Because that sounds very fantasy novel, firstly. Um... Play the other one. I just need to be super greedy now. Nice. So playing this here got me one extra point because the Kelpie's ability propped before this did. Uh, Lauren Bass, what Stop fantasy trade, series? Damn it! Uh, uh, Okay, so they're playing 27-point Drakenborgs. That's scary. 
There's no way around that. That's scary for us. But equally, I just Kraken, right? So now Magic Compass into Kraken. The problem is I can't kill the Kraken and get it back. Which I hate. Back row's full, who cares? And it doesn't really make any difference, but... I guess. Alright. Unleash the Kraken. Yeah, okay. Reorgan with Storm should kill it. Maybe. No, it doesn't, right? Reorgan with Storm will do four damage. They, could, they also, if they've got any sense, will boost the Kraken, yes. Oh, round four carryover. Poggers. Uh... Magic is Filling back row was obviously the idea, so they couldn't replay the Drakenborg. We don't love that, but... Actually, this is better now. Hey, Lana, good to see you. Yeah, so now the 27 points, they can't play the Dwimbiandra. We have given them one extra turn where they can. Oh, teleportations, of course, Lionheart. Oh, yeah, we should still win. Honestly, we should be fine. And we should win by a lot. So that doesn't help them. Because of the nerf to Wimbiandra, they don't get close. And that's the thing I've been saying, right? This list, and that wasn't by any means a small... I had another card that was going to give me... Reorgan is 8 on his own, plus 8 damage, 16 damage on the other side, 24, plus 4 lots of... We were winning that by 100 plus points. Easily 100 plus points, right? If you win round one, take them to a long round three, they can't win. This, like, they just, not against this. If they've got stacks of removal or you don't stick your engines, you're in trouble. But even if the, what do they get? Four? Five? Let's say they got five lots of Drakenborg value. Even if we double that, we still win. 